Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about the basics of Webpack and Babel, and we will continue further in this video about setting up the Webpack uh, configuration. Okay, so we have discussed this that uh, we have we are exporting a function in the module.export in webpack config.js into our theme and we have the entry and the output already set up so the next thing we want to do is we are going to specify what dev tool we'll be using okay so dev tool and we'll set this to source map oops source map so what this does is this will actually emit a full source map in a separate file so along with bundling uh, everything together and you know giving us a main.js file it's also going to create the main.js.map file as well so how it is helpful is that it adds a reference comment to the bundle so that so development tools know where to find it uh, you can always set this to uh, false if you don't need to have the main.js.map so if you don't want the source map files then you can set this to false like come over here and set this to false okay so you can read more about it if you want on the webpack site okay and then the next thing we want is basically we want to have some rules so I'll say module and then I want some rules and then I'll set this to rules which I will just create in a moment so this rules I'm going to create over here const rules and then whatever rules we're going to have for the webpack okay so how is it going to bundle? What are the rules it needs to follow? So we'll we'll focus on that now. All right. So <coughs> so the first thing, so the first rule we have is for the JavaScript. So inside of the Webpack, you need to write text. So inside of these rules, you need to write text, and then you need to specify the which type of files you will use regex for that. Okay. So we'll say .js js files .js and then dollar sign okay and what should you should include for these rules well you should include the JS directory okay and then after that what you should exclude because I don't want to you to take care of the node module uh, because when you install the packages notice that all of these packages have been installed inside of the node modules packages so I don't want Webpack to uh, do anything with the node modules because those are the packages npm packages that have been installed so I, I just want I'm just telling Webpack that exclude everything inside of the node modules directory. So node modules directory. Okay. And then so I'm going to use so there are different loaders that are available. So if you're wondering what loaders are, uh loaders actually enable us to bundle the static assets. Loaders tell Webpack how to interpret and translate files. The transformation happens on a per file basis before adding to the dependency graph. Okay. And so what are the use of these loaders? Well, as Webpack only understands JavaScript, we use loaders to pass the style sheet, the images, and outputs as, as JavaScript. Okay. It can also check linting issues, it can resolve static assets and it can also transpile the non-compliant code. So the basic loaders that are available are SAS loader, CSS loader, Babel loader, post CSS loader, file loader and URL loader. Okay. So this is the job of the loader is basically okay is to parse all of the data for you because Webpack only understands JavaScript. Okay. So we are going to use the Babel loader over here and if you want to go ahead and check what Babel loader does you can always come in over here and just search for the Babel loader and take a look here so it says that this package allows transpiling JavaScript files using Babel and Webpack right 
so it does it helps in transpilation so let's go ahead and go back to our code so we're done with the Babel loader the next loader we have is the CSS loader right so I'm just going to copy these rules and this will be the second set of rules so Babel loader is done now we're going to go for CSS loader so remember that we had already installed all of these packages if you take a look you've already installed the Babel loader the CSS loader yeah so all of these packages are already installed I'm just going ahead and using them using them okay CSS loader so what should it uh, include okay uh, so first of all this is going to be for our SAS files now of course we haven't set up our our SAS but we're going to eventually need it so I'm just setting that up right now so I'm just saying that take care of all of the SAS files okay and exclude the leave the include part exclude the node modules so take a look at what CSS loader does so I'll come in over here I'll paste it so you can see that the CSS loader interprets at import and URL like import require and will resolve them right so eventually just to sum it up even though CSS are going to be converted to JavaScript because Webpack only understands JavaScript so because it only understands JavaScript and is going to convert even the CSS into JavaScript, we need some kind of a plugin that, that can actually extract the CSS out of it and give us the CSS modules uh, after bundling them, right? So for that, what we're going to do is we'll use our mini CSS extract plugin. So if you remember that we had actually gone ahead and installed the mini CSS extract plugin so where is it yep this is the one mini CSS extract plugin right so all I'm gonna do is first require it on top so I'll say const and then I'll say mini CSS extract plugin and I'll require it so whatever packages you need you can require it over here and then I'll just put the name so what's the name mini CSS extract plugin I'm gonna put it here and that's it okay and then I'm gonna use its method so if you take a look npm so the plugin extracts CSS into separate files it creates a CSS file per JS file which contains CSS it supports on-demand loading of CSS and source maps okay so how do we use it so you can see that you have an option to use it like this uh, use mini CSS extract plugin dot loader and then put CSS loader so let's go ahead and use that into our file so I'm gonna paste it here oops I think it didn't get copied hold on uh, copy oops copy it yep perfect I can break them into multiple lines so this is how you do it so basically this is going to use the CSS loader to convert CSS into the array of JavaScript and then uh, mini CSS extract plugin is going to go ahead and uh, extract the CSS out of it and give it into separate files okay great this is awesome now next thing we're going to do is use a file loader as well now you will say to me why do I need file loader right well again because the webpack only understands JavaScript so what about the images images is not JavaScript right so again you need to install file loader for that right so let's go ahead and do that again I'll go ahead and copy this format and this will be another set of rules so you can keep adding the rules depending on what kind of loaders that you are using onto your packages and you can just keep specifying that right so I'm gonna go ahead in and inside of test I'm gonna put okay PNG uh, JPEG SVG JPEG GIF ICO so it's gonna take care of all of these files and then let's exclude the sorry let's remove the include and exclude because we don't need that uh, and we're just going to use our loader so how do we use this file loader so let's search file loader 
if I load a webpack okay here you go right so this is how you use it yeah we'll go with this one so we have loader as file loader and then we have you can also pass some options so we can pass options okay so we can pass options the name of the file where it needs to input so this will take the path the name of the file and the extension of the file so let's say it's the um, cat.jpg okay so it's going to take that and whatever the path is right and then it also takes public path so if you take over here it takes public path so I'll pass this as well so public path and in our case we can say production production if it's production so remember we use the cross env uh, package this is going to be useful over here so we'll say process dot env dot node dot underscore env okay so if this is let me make it a little small it's too big okay so node env okay if that's the case so if process dot env dot node env which means if the environment is production then just go one step outside and if it's the development which is not production then go to step outside so this is going to be in in relation to your actual path okay so this is how we set the public path for that okay for the images and that's it uh, so later on we'll be setting up more rules when we actually set up the fonts etc but yeah i think this is good to go uh, for your basic setup uh, for rules <music>